Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Armor Report. This is our morning meeting and welcome one and all uh, to the end of the year 2022, making this morning meeting open to all of you. What we're going to do is go over quick market discussion, look at the indexes, talk about our algorithms, some thoughts on the year, um, and then focus on a trade. I'm going to share with you a trade that's really been working for us, um, how to trade oil and gas. We're using the ETF, UNG, USO. I'm going to walk you through step by step how that trade works. There's one particular hack that I think you're going to find interesting that really sets up the trade for us. So I'll walk you through that. And then if you have any quick questions, we can um, we can round out the discussion with some some Q&A if you've got it. So uh, without further ado, the Armour Report, what is it? It's a virtual hedge fund. What that really means is Yours truly, I'm running my own personal capital, capital for individuals. Started the Armour Report to bring institutional information flow to individual investors and share what I believe to be the differentiating factor between the successful money manager and everybody else. And that is risk management, right? Armour Report, algorithmic risk management research. Now, we don't always get it right. Some years are going to be tougher than others. OK, but we have to strive to manage risk first and capture upside second. And the key is to put ourselves on the right side of probability over and over again when rewards worth risk. And the only way to do that is to use algorithms. Algorithms are probability based mathematical calculations telling us when we have that window that's optimal to put money to work. Now, in a bull market, you can get away with ignoring that window. You can jump through little cracks in the wall and still make it because it's a bull market and the Fed's adding liquidity. And what happens is you get further and further away from your discipline of how to manage money correctly. And it sows the seeds of your own demise. And ask me how I know. I've been doing this over 30 years and this is a process, okay? We don't always get it right. Don't beat yourself up over it. 2022 is a tough year, but it does. I guess what you what you could say to yourself is if I don't learn from this year and I don't set up the right strategies and the right processes going forward, I'm destined to go through this movie over and over and over again. You'll have years when you make a lot of money and then you'll have years when you give it all away because you're not following a strategy that protects capital first and captures upside second. So what I offer to you and what I am constantly offering to myself, you know, because we teach best what we both what, what we need to learn. Right. We teach best. What we need to learn. So the whole reason I really started the armor report a couple of years ago sharing these types of videos on YouTube was to help me remember the most important factor of running money successfully over a long period of time. And that's to protect the capital. That's the key. So at the Armour Report, we lead with what we call the risk monitor. I say flow of institutional information. What does that mean? Well, what we've done is we spent a lot of time, a lot of capital, a lot of effort putting together algorithms to, to, to raise our probabilities okay and i'm sharing that information with you at the arm report and i'm what we do is we make it kind of simple on the website right there armorreport.com a r m r report.com what we do is we have a page of our website called the risk monitor now we have portfolios run strictly following the risk monitor and those portfolios are up this year we have Armour Insiders that followed the risk monitor. They're making money this year. Not a lot of money, but in a year like this, what you want to do is hold on to your capital, make it grow a little bit, wait to pounce on the next bull run. The risk monitor helps you do that. It really gets rid of all the noise. Turn off CNBC, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, all this other trash that is only designed to keep you glued to the screen, frustrated and watching their advertisements. 
that's what they do. They bring people on TV this way, that way. They argue one way or the other. You don't get any information from that that's valuable. You want to get rid of that noise. When do you put capital to work? You put it to work when the optimal time based on statistics tells you it's worth the risk here. Let's put money to work. doesn't mean you make money every time. It's a probability algorithm. Even if it's right eight out of 10 times, it's going to lose money twice. It's okay. You follow that strategy. And what it does is it stops you from putting money to work in a year like this. So the risk monitor only had two entries this year, two. One was a break even entry early in the year. And one, we saw about a five plus percent rally. And I don't know how many weeks it was, not, not too many weeks, three, four weeks. That was the whole year ended up profitable. If all we did was run our money following the risk monitor, which follows seven indexes. And we look at treasuries, long dated treasuries in this market, not always, but we did invest in treasuries, TLT, right? These are all ETFs and indexes. The secret behind the risk monitor, why it's so effective is that it looks for confluence. We follow seven indexes that comprise, in our opinion, the whole market action. And when we see all seven algos tell us the same thing, we recognize that the only way that can happen is if institutions, which are the elephants in the room, are putting money to work. And when they're putting money to work, markets rally in a sustainable way for even a short period of time that allows us to make some money, raise stops and protect. And in a year where you're collecting, what is it now, almost four and a half percent on treasury bills that go out a couple of months, it's okay to sit in cash, right? So we had two opportunities to put money to work. Rest of the year we sat in cash, collecting interest, rolling treasury bills, waiting for the next bull market. So how do you use this information going forward? What's it saying right now? Let's take a quick look. So this risk monitor has been red, okay? It's red. This is a picture of the S&P. This is the downtrend we've suffered through all year, okay? Not gonna go over the other indexes. Some are a little better, some are a lot worse. We'll look at the S&P. The risk monitor went green here. This was the actionable information that allowed us to make money through this run. This was the profitable run in our portfolio. And it went red on this day right here, which is the 6th of December. Back into 100% cash. Market has gone lower. So what, what we're doing now is, what does it mean when we're 100% cash? For a strict risk monitor portfolio, it means we're sitting in cash. We put the money in the treasury bills and we wait. I don't know if the risk monitor will go green by the end of this week, by the end of next month. It's seven algorithms that are all communicating together. It gives us an answer, okay? What we have done is strip out of those seven, the S&P only ETF algorithm. It's going to give us risk on entry points more frequently with a lower probability of success, but still enough to put capital to work in the S&P and capture upside in the swing trade. Both the S&P only algo and the risk monitor algo are red right now. That's as negative as we can get. It doesn't mean we have to short. You can if you want to be aggressive, but what it really means is take time to work on your whiteboard, do your research, get ready for the next move. So when we go green, you're not scrambling, trying to figure out what to do next. And in all humility, this is the beauty of the arm report because we have at our website, right? You go there, we have a page, whiteboard. Here are all of our favorite names. And we're constantly working on them and lifting them into what we think are the top shelf names. So if the risk monitor turns green, this is where we want to go. And then the other names were just are like a work in progress. It could take six, nine, 12 months of doing research on a company before we say, yeah, we really want to own that. So this is a long-term process. And then the cream rises to the top and we try to match that with a risk monitor green. And that's where we put money to work. It's a simple method. Okay. So right now it's red. There's no guessing when it's going to change. Could change by the end of the week. 
could change by next month. I don't know. We wait, we do the research, we work. The S&P strategy. You could argue that if the S&P were to close above the 50 day moving average in the next couple of days, let's say, it's possible that algo gives us an entry point. We might trade it for a couple of weeks in January. It's possible. I'll be sharing that information live in the trading desk as it's happening, if we're putting that money to work. Okay. So for right now, to wrap up our market thoughts, it's been a very difficult year, but it's a year that proves how important algorithmic entry trading is and investing. So it's not just for traders. What you want to do is align yourself with the algo. When it's green, that's when you've got the highest probability of success. So you put some capital to work, see if you can make some money. If you don't, you get stopped out, you wait. It keeps you out of the collapse. You take that time to collect interest and treasury bills, do your research, get your next entry point, try it again. Okay, so we're in that waiting period now. What we do have in the portfolio, gold and silver. You can take a look at where we own gold and silver. Right now, we just have the physical, physical gold, physical silver. So we saw this bottom in silver in here. Oops, that is not what I wanted to look at. We have this bottom in silver here. And in a second now, I'm going to get to the, our, our energy play in a minute, but we're going to start with commodities, okay? So the, the one area where we're willing to put some money right now is outside of the risk monitor purview. Risk monitor is about equities, particularly U.S. equities. OK, commodities trade a little bit different. So if the risk monitor is red, you may see us have an allocation to gold, silver, oil, platinum, palladium, wherever copper it depends. In a particular year, because those things don't follow in lockstep with the risk monitor, obviously, right? They're commodities. They're a little different. And so we see stories about China reopening, getting rid of their COVID policy and all these things. Theoretically, that should be bullish for commodities. OK. There's a long process that I can't go over right now. On why we think gold and silver are going to have a very, very large run. Can't go over it right now in this meeting. OK. But suffice it to say, we're always looking to get long the metals. So we saw this bottom formation in here. We ended up positioning silver right in here and we're enjoying the rally in silver. OK, that's Sprott physical silver, Sprott physical gold. Bottom line, these things, we picked them off right off the low. And I share this with you not to crow about how we bought them perfect, but to use them as a guide to what works in a bear market. And that is stage one basis. What you want to try to do is identify a favorite name, a favorite investment theme, whatever. Wait for that sell off to take place. Wait for the bottom to form. Buy it coming off the bottom. That's when you have the highest probability of success with the least amount of risk and the highest reward from entry. So you've just optimized your entry. And a bull market, you can buy second, third stage basis, sometimes even fourth stage basis, and you keep getting paid. But it sows the seeds of your own demise because then you believe that always works. And of course, you walk yourself right into a meat grinder of a bear market. Remember this because you'll have opportunities over and over again in your investing life to get it right. Get disciplined now. If you've dug yourself a hole, don't keep digging. You're not going to make all the money back right away. Start following the right discipline. Start rebuilding your net worth. Do it the right way. And then you'll hit that pocket that is beautiful, which is the beginning of a bull market. And your net worth will soar. You just have to have patience. You have to take your time and rebuild correctly. And then follow that strategy, even in a bull market, right? You get into a bull market. OK, maybe you expand from level one basis to level two basis. But don't get greedy and start buying four five and six. 
recognize that move's getting out of hand, find the new idea that's just coming out. And here's a thought for you. You can write it down, put it in your trading journal. If you can't find any new ideas that are just coming out, it means the whole market's overpriced and risks are now dramatically more than the reward from that entry. And that's a time to start shifting to protecting your capital. Write it down, write it down, because you're going to have multiple opportunities in your investing life to get it right. Okay. So we have a little gold and silver. So now let's go into energy. I'm going to walk you through the energy trade that we're doing on our desk every single day. When this strategy sets up, we put a day trade on. It works with a high degree of probability and the rewards definitely worth the risk. And this is what it looks like. Whoops, not what I wanted to show you. Okay. Here's USO. So this is the ETF of USO. I imagine this will work with the futures or however you like to trade energy. But we like to use the ETF to show us the entry point and then execute however you wish. The key here, and this is the number one hack of this trading strategy. The key here is a sell-off that's fairly aggressive that lasts for over an hour. That's what this white box is with the number one in it. So let's just go over this, set this up real quick. This is the ETF USO. You're looking at a three minute bar chart. All the lines that are drawn on it are an armor algorithm. We call the price movement profiler, the PMP. It's a combination of the volume weighted average price, the VWAP, and we call it an armor VWAP. I'll explain why in a minute. These are all armor parts of our algorithm. The VWAP, standard deviations above and below the VWAP. Fibonacci extensions above and below an opening range. And the average true range above and below the price. Now we call these armor ATRs and stuff like that because what we're using is off the shelf ATR calculations. And then we rewrite the code and infuse the volatility component into that calculation because every asset has a different volatility over top day and multi day. Okay. So the, the lines are going to change, but I'm just sharing with you the basics. VWAP standard deviations above and below VWAP. Fibonacci extensions above and below an opening range and the average true range high and low. Okay. So each bar is three minutes. Down bars are red, up bars are blue. What we look for, step one, is an aggressive sell off for over an hour. That's what sets the apple. Number two is a volume reversal or some type. One of seven armor reversal triggers that we use. That's where the green box pops up. We get long on the green box. Number three, the first big extension bar, we book a profit. The key here is to get off of, and step three is very important. The faster you can cauterize your risk and get your emotions out of a trade, the better you can trade it. So that first big extension bar, when I'm trading anything on a day trading level, and I get a big extension bar to the initial target. And in this case, the VWAP was the first target. So either I get a big extension bar or I get a move to the first target, whichever. I book a profit. Maybe a 25% of my position I take off or 30% I take off. And I raise my stop to break even. The trades that work never come back to break even. Okay. So take a look. This is important. You've got to get your emotions off the trade. Don't be greedy. I hope it continues to skyrocket. I don't mind that I took a quarter or a third off and booked a profit on that. Okay. Step three is the extension bar, the VWAP. So either it gets up to the VWAP quietly or it blows through it. Either way, by the end of that bar, I'm booking a profit. I'm raising my stop to break even. Okay. The next target was the high of the day. 
book a little bit more of the profit at the high of the day. And then what we do eventually, what we get to is a position. Maybe we've got 50% of our trade still on and we raise our stop to a low of two bars ago and some type of, in this case, it's so clear, candlestick reversal, huge up bar, volume spike. That's what that green dot means. Close near the bottom of the bar, break down. This bar right here is where we would book the rest of our gains as it's taking out the low of two bars ago. Okay. Trade over. Just captured all we could capture. Now let's shift over to the next day. Same situation. This was a gap up morning. Close the gap rip. This was a flat open morning. Can't buy the open. It's just flat. Nothing there. Get the sell off. Step one, totally freaking everybody out. Oh, it's over. They're going to crush oil. Boom, 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 boom. Then there's the reversal. The, this is an armor algo reversal signal. My favorite, which is a volume reversal, big down bar on volume. Take out the high of that bar within 12 minutes. High probability of success. It's going to go up. Get long right there. Rips through VWAP. There's step three. I book some profit. Rips to the high of the day. Book some more profit. And in this case, this was like, this is like a poster day. And this is the best possible day I could share with you because it worked to such an incredible degree. And it ends the move right at the ATR, which is this blue line here, the average true range high of the day. It skyrockets on volume through the fifth tar of this target. Okay. And so as it reverses down, either we book it as it goes through the ATR or you raise the stop to the ATR. And when it comes down through it, the trade's over. Okay. The same thing could be done on natural gas. So I'm just going to show you natural gas real quick. And you can see the same setups. This is a gap down sell off, set up an opportunity for a rip back up to and through the VWAP. That was a hard day to make money. You could still make money on it. Here's a better day. This was a gap up. Don't buy the gap up. Wait for the sell off, right? So it comes down, gets wrecked. The reversal is the green box. And then just follow the strategy up through VWAP, book a profit up to the high of the day, book some more of the profit rips all the way to the ATR. I book some profit there and let it go, go, go. And then right here is the bar that takes out the low of two bars ago, right there. That's where I'm out. Trades over. So that is how we're trading on our trading desk energy. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take it. Right now for the next, I don't know, few minutes, We've got some time before we have to set up our live desk. Armor Insiders, you know, we'll, we'll be on the live desk all day long, sharing information and trading together. So any questions you've got, let's, um, let's walk through it. Uh, focus. I can't wait to work with you, brother. What do you got for me? Any thoughts? Take a look at Exxon, Intel, CCL. Or am I looking? What am I looking? What am I looking? All right. Let's take a look. Any questions you want to ask me? Anybody can just throw it up there in the comment section. I'm happy to answer it. We'll run through a couple of charts with you. So let me first repeat what I said a minute ago, okay, which is risk monitors red. Now's not a time to put money to work, okay? So I don't care what the charts look like. From the armor report point, point of view, we won't be putting any money to work. Okay, so these names might be at the top of our whiteboard, if the risk monitor turns green, some of these names might go in. So the discussion we're having right now is should these names be at the top of the whiteboard? What I call top shelf. So Exxon looks really good. Um, but let me let me go over base stage bases with you. OK, the time to, to buy Exxon, really, if you want to, you know, if let's be honest, OK, you don't have to buy the ultimate low as it's selling off. But I mean, there's clearly a double bottom in Exxon. Let's just go over this real quick. OK, so here's the double bottom in Exxon and the move back above the 200 day, and the 50 day moving average right in here 
was telling you it's time to buy Exxon. I'm sharing this with you, Vogus. So you 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 get an understanding of why this is not an entry point for the Armour Report. Okay, the real entry point is here, coming across the 50 and 200. The 50 and 200 have just crossed positive. Now they're in an uptrend. Okay, so that's stage one base coming out of a downtrend. That's the stage one base. That's 2020, right? Now what you could say is, well, here's another base. So what you want to try to do is, is, is kind of, um, you want to build your, your bases so you can understand where you are in the structure of a stock's ascent. Okay, so that's a stage two base. So it broke the downtrend, there's one, rallied up and then consolidated for about a year. Okay, all of 2021. And then it broke out again. So that's a stage two base, which is a great base. All right. And it rips higher. At best, this would be a stage three base. And and that's being kind. Okay. That's being kind. Depending on how you want to build bases, we can get into all kinds of debates. But you could argue this is a stage three base. Uh, let's don't get caught in the minutiae of how to build bases. You could, you could just eyeball that and see what I'm talking about. This base is nice and tight, forming right around the moving averages, right? This base is getting further and further away from the 200-day moving average, okay? So the further you are away from the 200-day, the higher the risk. So this is a follow-on process right here. So you're wildly bullish on energy, and you say, I want to own energy, and you want to own Exxon. I get it. If you've earned the right to take the risk because you've been making money in Exxon all the way up, and you're want to put some capital to work, totally get it. But in a bull market, you can get away with that a lot. Stage three bases work. In a bear market, for the armor report, the risk is too high for the reward from this entry point. So I won't be buying that and it wouldn't be at the top of my list. Doesn't mean it can't be at the top of yours. Intel. All right. So here's an idea that's going to try to make um, a bottoming structure. But do we want do we do we have an interest in something getting destroyed to this degree? Look at the Exxon entry point back here. OK, this took a double bottom of over a year and a move above the 200 and above the 50. You want at the very least the 50 and the 200 day to be either flat to up before you start putting money to work. This is just basic technical analysis I'm going over now. Okay. So what you've got is pressure, just crushing Intel. The 200 day, the 50 day, every moving average is headed lower. Okay. There's no signs. There's nothing here that would make a technical analyst want to buy Intel. Nothing. And so if you say to me, well, the fundamental story is getting better. I say, okay, great. Let it build a base. Let the 50 day start to turn higher. Now, here's a funny thing, Bogus. You might say to me, well, I'll have to pay up for it. At that point, it'll be up. That's right. One of the armor axioms, you can find it on the website, armor rules of the road, pay more, you'll make more money. It's like a Yogi Bearism. Pay more for a stock, you'll make more money. It's, it's okay. I'd rather pay up for Intel with it trading above the 50 day moving average and the 50 day going higher and using an algorithmic entry point at that, at that stage, because the probabilities are higher that the assets going up and the rewards worth the risk right here. This is like catching a proverbial falling knife and I can't do it. Same for CCL. So there's just nothing there. There's just nothing there for me to do right now. It could be building a base. You know, if it is, that would be great. Keep it on your watch list. And so, so Vogus, I'm not saying fundamentally there's not something that you like. There could be. And if you were, if you look at the Armour Report whiteboard, there's a section called Work in Progress. Names that I like fundamentally that have god-awful chart patterns go on the Work in Progress. 
I'm going to listen to conference calls. I'm going to read research reports. I'm going to get all the information I can to get comfortable with the company. And then I'm going to let it be a work in progress until that pattern changes and I can move it up the leaderboard. Hey, Mom Chill. How you doing, my brother? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Any questions you've got, let me know. Um, Stephen D., nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you as well. Thanks a lot, man. Any thoughts on Fed policy? Fed policy. I, I honestly think... Stefan, that if, if, if 2022 taught us anything, it taught us that nobody has a clue what the Fed's going to do next. They keep saying what they're going to do. Nobody believes what they're going to do. They keep doing it. And you can argue all day long the pros and cons of what they're doing. You can call them idiots, I mean, whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, at the end of the day, it's arguments like that that I believe get us off the topic of making money together in the stock market. We will never know what the Fed's going to do. They can change on a dime. They can make things worse. We can't quantify it. We can't model for it. God knows analysts can't model for it. Economists haven't a clue what the market's going to do. How about what Bank of Japan did? There wasn't a single economist thought the Bank of Japan <laughs> It's got to raise rates. Okay, so nobody has a clue what central banks are going to do next. And what we have to do is get rid of that noise. We can't care about that. Even if we guessed right this time, I guarantee we're going to guess wrong the next time. So you can't build a strategy around that. Execute using algorithms. It gets rid of the noise. Not every algorithmic entry point is going to be the beginning of a bull market. We saw that last year. Risk Monitor had two entry points. One broke even, one made money. The rest of the time we sat in cash. But one of those Risk Monitor entry points is going to be the start of the next bull market. And I submit to you, it'll happen on or before the Fed pivots. And the reason for that is the, the algorithms are sleuthing out institutional flows of capital. Institutions pay obscene amounts of money for information. That's just a fact. Don't hate the player, hate the game if you want, right? But that's a fact. So institutions, hedge funds and whatnot, will pay for information and have it ahead of the rest of us. The only way to neutralize that unfair advantage is to use an algorithm that identifies flows of institutional capital. There's many different ways to do that. The way I like to do it is to look at seven different indexes and treasuries, okay? And when they all talk the same game, when I see confluence across big cap, small cap, value, momentum, innovation. When they're all doing the same thing, I say there's only one guy that can move the entire market like that. That's institutions. There must be a reason why they're doing that. Sometimes there's just a huge short covering squeeze like it was a few weeks ago. We made some money on that. Okay. But at the beginning of every major bull cycle, it starts like that. Then you find out what's happened in some cases right 2020 2020 we got the risk monitor green when the fed came out and said we're going to buy everything in sight that was an easy call i mean hard because the market had crashed 50 percent and everyone thought the world was coming to an end but easy because risk monitor went green and the fed came out and said we're going to buy everything in sight okay put money to work you know we had a huge run so we never know how it's going to play out next but I can guarantee you guessing and working up a strategy based on what I think Fed members are going to do is a disastrous strategy. And it's even worse if I get it right. If I guess and tell you something and I happen to be right, 
that's even worse, right? Because now you think I know something and I think I'm brilliant. And really, I just got lucky. So I want to avoid all those conversations and just algorithmic risk management research in 2023. Manage your risk first, capture upside when you can, do your research so you're ready. That's the strategy for me. Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays to everybody. Happy Hanukkah, whatever you may follow and whatever you may do. Hope you guys had a great time and happy new year. Um, do you use linear algorithmic charts? Um, I am an old William O'Neill fan, and he's all about algorithmic. If, if you're new to investing, I suggest you read the book, How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. I think it's a great foundation for a for for you to build your own strategy okay and so he talks about um, logarithmic all the time and i i usually use logarithmic that's usually what i'm using all right ladies and gentlemen this has been lots of fun thanks for joining me today for our morning meeting i look forward to seeing all of my armor insiders on the live desk at nine i think we'll do 9 25 as usual and we'll get our day started the rest of you have a great end of the year have a great, you know, New Year's and I'll see you in 2023. All right. Take care, everybody. Whoa.